Well, good morning, families and students. I hope that you are well today. Just a few quick, quick announcements from my back room. This room takes up most of the square footage of the house. It's about five to 600 square feet back here. Um, so it's a little more echoey than the other rooms maybe, but um, I'll give you a tour of it at the end of this video. As we get started, I've been doing an update every week on the numbers of COVID. Uh, just because it'll be interesting to see based on post date when I look back at these in a while what the growth rate was. So in the United States uh, we have 1,219,000 cases and we have had 73,000 deaths, just over 73,000 deaths from COVID. In Indiana we have 22,500 cases and just under 1,300 deaths. Jefferson County, we have 32 cases, zero deaths. Switzerland County, we have 15 cases, zero deaths. And in Jennings, we have 89 cases and three deaths. Uh, the Indiana Department of Health website has been fantastic at covering all of the numbers of this in the state of Indiana. They can tell you the percentage of ventilators that are available, the percentage of, uh, of beds that are available in the state. It's really pretty amazing website. And you can get on there and you can see the numbers by age category of people who've tested positive and also uh, the number of people percentage wise who've passed away in the state of Indiana. And if you can take those numbers, this is why I love math. If you take the total number of people who've tested positive and you multiply it by the fraction or by the percentage amount per age category, you can come up with how many people in each age category have tested positive. And then if you take the total number of deaths, you can come up with how many people in each age category have passed away. Um, and then when you divide those two numbers, you can figure out uh, if you're sick enough to be tested and you get COVID, um, you can tell by age category in the state of Indiana what the percentage chance is of, of death, kind of the, a generic. It won't be a true death rate because it's not based on, on people who have the disease. It's based on people who've tested positive for the disease. But... So with that in mind, students, people your age in the state of Indiana who tested positive, uh, it's about one person who passed away out of 675. That's 0.1%, which means in the state of Indiana, if a thousand of you teenagers and, and younger test positive, one of you would pass away from it. Not too risky. My age category, I just hit 40, so now I'm into the 40s age category. Um, 3,800 of us tested positive, 27 of us have passed away. That's about... Um, I'm sorry, 3,100 of us tested positive. Uh, yeah, 27 of us passed away. So for me, it's about 0.7% for 40 year olds, which means if there were a thousand of us who got it, seven of us would pass away. Um, still not too, too bad. My parents' age, they're in their 60s. Um, my parents' age, it, it goes up almost 10 times that. So out of 3,127 people, um, 214 of them have passed away. That's 6.8%, which means out of a thousand people who would get it, about 68 of them would pass away. So as you keep going up in age, that number just keeps getting huge. When you get to the 80s, I won't share it, but it, it gets even exorbitantly higher, so much higher. So um, a lot of the staying in stuff seems like a waste when you're youthful and healthy. It truly is a service to the people um, who are older than you that you are doing your best to quarantine and stay in. So thank you so much for that. The governor has laid out his, his process for opening back up. Um, and it is a process, and that process is based on people being smart about their decisions in the coming weeks. And if people are not smart about their decisions in the coming weeks, then that process may halt, and he said, or even possibly go backwards. Um, so please make sure that you are following the guidelines that the governor has set forth, that you're still being smart about this. Um, we have more cases now than we did when this all started, so we should be as careful or more than as we were when this all started. There it is. Um, let's go straight to uh, the graduation question. You know, uh, people are, I'm, I'm still, I'm a villain. So the graduation issue is we have one senior who is shipping out to the Navy on June 24th. The for sure graduation date that we can probably have is in July. This student would miss graduation. So we are still holding off, waiting for word from the Archdiocese on permission to do a graduation before he runs off. Um, so if that is possible, I, I, they told me I should know by Wednesday. 
Um, the local health department has agreed to it with um, some concerns about spacing and we've talked with them uh, about those concerns and about our plan for spacing and they have given us the green light for a June or July date. Um, and so we're just waiting to hear about permission from up north. We, we don't want to do something that could um, kind of bring bad attention to us, but, but the seniors have all spoken with me and they very much are interested in that senior being able to be there. When, when we only have 19 seniors, if one is missing, it feels quite empty. And so, um, we, you know, we all know each other quite well. We love each other, so we, we want them to be there if at all possible. So with prom, Mrs. Schaefer is working on a prom date in July, and so she will be uh, getting back to me eventually on that. We're not sure what we'll be able to do with location, but, but it is definitely in our mind. Those are the two things in our mind. The other thing in my mind is for our juniors this year of looking at possible ways to make up that junior retreat before they have their senior retreat next year, which seems a little goofy, but it would be nice to get that in there for you. Um, Especially as I've talked with these seniors, I have a series going on called Airing Your Clean Laundry, and I'm talking with these seniors, and a whole lot of them, when I ask them what they love the most about Shaw or what they're going to miss, uh, retreats come to their mind. So I want to try to get those retreats in, if at all possible. Um, last week's teacher, that teacher that followed a band that can play rock music for their friends, um, was Miss Nig. So if you did not know that, Miss Nig is is totally cooler than you knew that she was already. So um, good work to those who did know that it was Miss Nig. Uh, and I don't have a teacher for this week. I do have two truths and a lie for myself, and you'll have to define the lie uh, in in the document that this is attached to. But before we do that, it is important that we recognize our leadership and we do have some student council um, elected representatives so congratulations to our treasurer Marilee Perez good work Marilee congratulations to our secretary Emma Clark a big congratulations to our vice president Johanna Leatherman and of course our president Trey Suggett so congratulations to those four thank you so much for your willingness to serve the school and to serve its students um, we appreciate it, and we know that you will do wonderful things. You've already done wonderful things, and so uh, just continue being wonderful, and we'll all be just fine. Seniors are now done. As of today, today was their last day uh, to turn stuff in, with the exception of some AP coursework. Um, so congratulations to our seniors, and um, a lot of little things are happening for them, but uh, we are just super excited for them to be able to experience the end of their high school career and move on to the next stage of their lives. So they're done. All the other students, you have next week to do missing work. So my suggestion to you as you're turning in missing work is to email the teacher. Don't just submit. Go ahead and email the teacher and get verification that they received it uh, so that there's no mistakes. There have been a few mistakes still going on with turning things in. And, um, and I have asked the teachers, you know, obviously to... Uh, accept all that but but you still got to do the work I'll say it again a zero is a zero we can't we can't grade a zero so please make sure that you're getting as much work done as, as you possibly can but for many of you who don't have makeup work today is kind of an easier day for you so uh, and next week will be too um, keep checking your email in case teachers have meetups going on next week but otherwise congratulations to many of you as well all right so the B joke friend of mine uh, wanted to start a beehive and started doing research about how to do it and realized, you know, you got to start with bees. So went to the shop, talked to the manager, said, hey, I want to start a beehive. What do I need to do? The manager said, you know, you want to start small. Uh, so my friend said, okay, well, how about I just start with a dozen bees? Manager said, great. Went over to the hive, started counting out bees. My friend noticed that when he got to 12, went ahead and put in a 13th B. And uh, my friend, being a moral person, said, hey, I think you've made a mistake. Um, you gave me an extra B. I only needed 12, and, and you gave me 13. And the manager said, oh, yeah, that's, that's no big deal. That last B, that's a freebie. Uh, <laughs> I love dad jokes. That was actually given to me by a, a parent who thought, hey, this is a decent joke. And um, 
it's it's perfect. It's just right in line with these with these terrible jokes that I keep giving that I absolutely adore. So, um, I have very little else to say except my two truths and a lie for the sake of this video. We're at 10 minutes and then I'm going to show off the room uh, by sitting and pointing at things behind me. Two truths and a lie. You've got to define the lie. Number one, I won my university's lip sync contest. Um, is that a truth? Is that a lie? I won my university's lip sync contest. I went to Ball State, if that helps. So I won the Ball State lip sync contest. Number two, I used to announce for Shaw baseball games. Um, I used to announce for Shaw baseball games. So um, and if it helps, I graduated in 1998. So and I announced in them somewhere through there. So. Uh, and number three, in college, I taught a rappelling course. So, um, not like a formal graduate, like not like a formal for credit course, but I taught a, um, I was certified to be able to teach people how to rappel and, and I made a little bit of side money being able to do that. A lot of you know that I used to be quite the daredevil and I enjoy heights, so it was right up my alley. Um, which one of those things is a lie? Um, you'll have to tell me. Luke doesn't even know. So, uh. <laughs> I just keep my past in the past, and I got to keep looking forward, right? So, um, two truths and a lie. Try to figure that out. Also, make sure you put your name so that I can count any attendance issues for today. And now, let's go ahead and tour my back room. Uh, I am on one whole side, so boom. Here's the back room. It's rather large. We did these. This is the one room in the house we totally overhauled. It was wood paneling back here. It was, it was darker, and so uh, we had a water issue insurance helped us out and so we were able to replace some stuff so this carpet's actually the original carpet but we we put in this archway of drywall right right here this archway of drywall um to separate the two rooms thank you luke uh so that we created a true entrance over there and then a living space over here and um that was a big deal before it just kind of was one big area this uh area right here behind that is my laundry room and um, that's where I've been doing that airing your clean laundry series. So, um, and that's also where I keep most of my board games. A lot of my board games are out here at any given moment because I do like board games. We did these build-ins. These were um, done for us by uh, by a good friend, and he did a fantastic job. We actually have duct work behind some of these, so these were done to hide some of that duct work. Uh, we have one open. That's not a mistake. There's not a, a drawer a door there because that's where we keep. Uh, you know, like the PlayStation and cable stuff and all that, even though we don't have cable. Uh, over here, nothing major. Normally, that's a religious icon right there, but during this COVID thing, it has been a um, it has been a Velcro dartboard so that we can play a game. This table here is actually my dining room table. If you look back at my first video, I was sitting at that table, but I'm currently playing a game that's the most expensive game I ever bought. <laughs> And uh, it's huge. It takes up a huge amount of space on a table. So the table that we normally have back here for me to play board games on um, is too small. So we flip them and we put them in other rooms. That's the cool thing about being adult students. Um, if you want to just move stuff, you can just move stuff. If I want to camp out on the ground one night, I can camp out on the ground one night. So this table is not actually the normal table. So I'll sneak over this way and um, you can kind of see we have the back windows, tons of light, we have this, there's a little heater there, and then a fireplace. Every house I've ever owned has a fireplace, and every house I've ever owned I had no interest in, in having a fireplace, though I do appreciate having them, I just don't need them. I'm not like a huge fireplace person. And then over here is another door um, that goes into our dining room. Here's Juliet's uh, COVID Lego station. Luke does some too, but... And then in the other area, over by the external doors, there's another way to go into our house. So this this whole room used to be a, just a concrete slab patio. Um, and in fact, the roof line was here as kind of an overhang for the patio over on the other end. The laundry room was actually an outside shed. So when they enclosed this whole room, they kind of very cleverly included that laundry room as, a, as an extra room. So the outside shed went from being a shed to being uh, an interior room, which was, was quite clever. Um, and so this is, uh, we, it's our indoor outdoor space. We call it our, our above ground 
our above ground basement because we kind of treat it a little bit like a basement where we hang out a lot and, back room. and uh, it's, our, it's our back room it's the great room officially it's a lovely place to be I would say seven to eight months of the year this is where we spend most of our time and we've definitely gotten our use out of it during this COVID thing longest video ever I better stop talking students make sure you fill this stuff out so I can count attendance I hope that you have a nice day yeah yeah basically but